Hey, what's up? Today I'm going to be breaking down Mazaz Etude Number no. 4 from the Amy B Violin Grade 3 Syllabus. My student chose this piece today and I thought it sounded pretty cool. So I'm going to play through it now and then I'm going to give a bit of a rundown into the practice techniques and approaches that I would have as a student. Here we go. <laughs> from the top. So to start with, what we notice is we've got accents. So when we're doing accents, we need to make sure that we don't mix that up with any other bow strokes like staccato. It's not a short stroke per se, it's just an attacked stroke, but we still sustain the note. So I would practice this starting part by playing without the accents and just sustaining all the notes like this. <laughs> Once you can do that really sustained and connected bows, then you can start to add the accent in the bow. So you might go... And notice when I'm doing the accents, the accent, the note doesn't, the, the note doesn't go away. Like it's still there. It's just the start of the note that has an attack to it. Now you can do an accent with the bow like that, but we also need to use our left hand, lots of vibrato, for to get the accent out. Okay, so make sure you're really attacking the accent with heaps of vibrato. It's like an impulse for these notes. It's not necessarily a really controlled vibrato. It's more just like a... So that's how I'd approach this, all of these accented sections. Now, when you come to these semiquaver runs after that, there's different methods that you can use. Um, but the, the tried and tested method is to put dotted rhythms into it. So when you get to this part, you put a rhythm like that. So that's bar eight. And then you'd swap the rhythm around. And that will help your fingers and your bow get really coordinated and clean with the string change and the, the uh, evenness between the notes. You've got this, uh, these little marca, uh, staccatissimos before them. So just be very articulated on those. Okay, and then similarly we've got uh, accent to, accents into these crotchets all through bar uh, 9... 13, 14, 15, until you reach the Fort Sando, which is just another kind of accent, but a big one. Really click the sound of the down bow. We've got the staccatissimo. And then here, 
same sort of deal. You would work on the dotted rhythms to get all these notes coordinate. And then the opposite. And then you might break up that slur into two groups of four. So we might just go. And then you put it together. Okay, so there's different ways to do that. Make sure you're always simplifying these parts if you're struggling with them. Simplify them to the most simple part. So for instance, you might just simplify this run to one string. So you do the three notes that are on one string at the top. That's pretty straightforward for most people. But where it becomes tricky is when you have to put string changes with the bow and the fingers. So you might put a little break there. At every string change. Break. Sorry. Break. 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 And yeah, so you just keep breaking it up like that and then stitching it together and see where it's where it's landed. Lots of variations like that can really help these runs. Okay, now we get to these Tenuto half bow uh, quavers. So really broad in the bow. Really broad in the bow. Okay, don't be afraid to use lots of bow there. It's a much more broad section, very resonant, forte. And then you get to... Make sure you're counting this. One, two. One, uh, one two. Okay, and then back to the broad bows. One, two. Lots of vibrato on those minims. And... Okay. Cool, and then what have we got? We've got some uh, martelet type of stroke or staccatissimo. I would do this in the upper half and this type of stroke is an explosive type of stroke so your bow should be going up and down vertically and as you pulse through these. So it's like in slow motion, it starts at say zero degrees of pressure. Then you increase into the center of the note to almost 100 degrees of pressure and then you release it. So... And that happens through pronation and supination of the bow arm. So it kind of goes in and out like that. If you're struggling with that motion, just start with the bow completely into the string and just pull the bow from side to side like that so that you're at least getting the short stroke and it's powerful. So if I did that, I'll just push it in and then do the fast bow stroke at the upper half. But you can sound it, you can see that it sounds, you can hear that it sounds a little bit unrefined. And that's because it needs that lift at the start and end of the note, the tapering off. So you're after more of the bounce, uh, more of the swelling in between the notes. Hopefully the harmonic's pretty uh, straightforward coming from an open E. And you just reach up to around, well, halfway up the string between the bridge and the nut of the um, fingerboard. It's just past the shoulder of the instrument. Okay, so you just stretch out your hand sort of like that, like a high five hand, but a little bit more reaching for the second finger, uh, for the fourth finger, and you'll reach it. Okay, then we're back to the accents, whole bows, pretty straightforward, lots of vibrato, lots of intensity. Then at 33, uh, we go... The character changes here. It's much more sweet. It's tapering off with a decrescendo and a cadence in the phrase. A little swell there. Uh, into the E. So you pull the bow fast into there. Into the E. Alright. And then we're back to the uh, Martele Staccatissimos. And the Fort Sando there. Which is kind of 
quite tricky to get because you're on an up bow in this um, in this edition. Edition. So up bow, really stick the bow down, push the bow down, grip the string, so that you get a nice click at the start. Now this one doesn't have a Sport Sundo on it, so and it's on a down bow. It's a nicer one. It tapers off, and it's not too not too intense at the start of the note. So that's that 38. And then back to March Lay. We've got a shift through there to get up to fourth position, and that should be pretty straightforward. Um, I won't talk about how to shift and all those things in this this one. This is more more of a practice method type of video. So so we've got um, another swell through that C natural at 38, 39, 40, 41. You can go to an open E there if you like. When you're tuning all of this stuff. Take out all the articulations, play it really slowly. When you're playing in a harmonic minor, it can be really nice to, to raise the tones and lower the semitones so that the, everything, all the semitones are very, very close to their their um, adjacent notes. So for instance, you've got these G sharps, you could raise them quite high. And there's an F natural, really low, quite edgy. Here's the G sharp. It can be really nice to raise that nice and high. Be careful because you've got a low four on the E string. That then goes to a high four on the E string. Another really high leading note, the D sharp. Make that nice and high, not too low. Now this this bowing is quite cool, where you have the long note to a staccatissimo note, and you want to make a, a really big point to get that staccatissimo note to stand out. So, okay. So get that to stick out. Again, lots of vibrato on the dotted crotchets to make them quite intense singing out. And the then the staccatissimo notes really jut out as well. Then we have, then we get into this E at 44, 45, 46. We play an E natural and it's tempting to actually go crashing into that and decrescendo. But what's written actually is a crescendo into a forte. So what you need to do instead is save the bow when you get there and increase the sound. So, all right, so I'll go from 40, uh, 42. So hopefully that makes sense. Make sure when you're doing the dotted crotchet to the quaver rhythm that it's nice and even. So we want one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two. That's really important to keep evenness in that rhythm. Otherwise, it really doesn't have the same effect to the listener when it's not even. Cool. Back to 40, 49. Uh, we're, we're back to this. Well, at 50, we're back to this uh, accented theme from the start. Then into 54, uh, we got back into the staccatissimo. So really this this exercise, this study, seems like it's going between the accent staccatissimo and uh, some legato and uh, some legato notes as well. So there's a whole range of different bowing articulations, but it really leans on the accented intense martelet and accented strokes. So, going forward 54, through there, I'll do that at the nut, 
and getting that uh, tenth through there. Just take your time. You don't have to rush through these. You don't have to rush. Just sit on those three chords. And then we're more into a legato section and we're tapering off each bow of these. So practice leaning on the first note of every one. You can just sort of practice that on its own without the semiquaver. So that you're wah, 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 wah. And then you add the semiquaver at the end without making it such a big deal. So. Okay. And then 58. Back to the staccatissimo martelle stroke. Sforzando on that. Lots of vibrato as well. Just remember that the accents and the sforzando happen with both hands. It's not just the bow, it's also the intensity and the vibrato that increases as you do it. So... Okay, and then we've got a chord there. Try not to smack it down from the air. Land on the string first as a stopped position and then pull the bow. Focus on the bottom notes so that you get a lot, of, a lot more of the bassy, lower register and that will support the high note. We don't need as much pressure on the top note, on the, high, on the E string usually. So just use bow speed on the bottom note and then just tickle the top note with the bow. Okay, and then we've got this epic finish uh, with the harmony. I like to kind of slide down because I don't want to separate, I don't want to uh, impact the intensity of the of the minims by cutting them and hiding my shift. So imagine I went at the end, gap. I think that's less impactful than if I just hear the slide. So if I go, So you can kind of hear me shifting down, but the intensity remains because I'm sustaining that sound. There's no gap there. Okay, so we've broken that down in a very quick, brief way. Obviously, there's lots of nuance and particulars to each student, how they play it and what they need to work on, be it the intonation, the rhythm, the tempo, the evenness, the bow stroke, the articulations, all those sorts of things. Very, very particular to the individual student. So if you do need particular help, very specific help on your technique, I'm actually writing a course, The Seven Day Violinist. And what that's going to do is going to break down all of these articulations, bow techniques, your biomechanics, how you move your body and play the violin, how you should be holding the instrument, how you should be shifting, doing vibrato, doing your, st uh, your staccato, your spiccatos, how to practice intonation, what types of intonation. I mean, we spoke a little bit today about the uh, melodic type of intonation where we raise those tones, squish down those semitones and vice versa. But there's actually a whole bunch of different types of tuning and intonation, harmonic tuning uh, and equal temperament. We can approach all of those in different ways, in different contexts, and I explain exactly how and where to apply those different types of intonation in those different contexts in the Seven Day Violinist course. So if you check the description, you'll find a, a Google form there. In that Google form, it's, it's an early sign up form. So what you're going to do is you're just going to put some details in. You're going to give me a little bit of a summary about what you want to learn, what you want to know, what burning questions you have as a student. I'm going to directly answer those questions in my course. I'm going to contact you and you're going to get a discount if you go into that early sign up form, okay? And that's just a one-time discount. It, once the course is released, it will be full price, okay? So go now into that course. If you like this approach, you like my approach, go now and, and go into that form 
and I'll be in contact. So I hope you like this video. I'll do a few more of these with the Amy B syllabus and we might go through um, just the ones that I like really. I just like to go through the, the pieces that I think sound cool. And if you're playing that piece, that's awesome. It will be relevant to you. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for